Blackie, I'm coming in behind you. Hello, hello. It's Lisa and Rodney from Crafting and Cruising, and we are cruising. But we are not in the bus. We are in the car. So, when you get on, please say hello. Let me know where you're watching from. And if you watch the replay, Please hashtag replay so I'll know you were on here. Thank you Stay all. Stay right on to I-264 East. I haven't um, been able to respond to every comment. I think I've gotten most of them. Um, somebody just got on and I don't know who it was because I can't see comment yet, nor can I see who's on here. So um, hopefully I can see comments pretty soon. Um, so I might do a little trivia in a minute. But um, this is a no makeup day for me because we're traveling. So, a couple things I wanted to show you. Hi, Susie Craig. A couple things I wanted to show you. First of all, look at this cool phone case that I got from Amazon. Thanks to Jennifer with Home Sweet, Home Sweet Create, who had this same case. Isn't that cute? It's blingy. Y'all know I love bling. So anyway, I can't have it on when I'm doing lives or propping my camera up because there's too much on it. Continue um, half a mile. Last night, I showed you guys the um, purse that I was working on for the costume party in Oklahoma City in October, and um, if you remember, if you were on there last night, I, I messed it up. I was showing y'all how I was doing black and white checks on it, and uh, I only did about um, four black and white checks, and then when I turned it around, I stuck my hand in the white paint and smeared it onto the white, so I had to um, touch that up. But I did finish that part last night. So Continue three tenths of a mile. Here is the back side that I was doing on the live last night. Um, that's the other part of the Mackenzie Childs napkin that I used from the front side. And um, so I have most everything done. I did go around the handle and the edge with um, liquid, um, go, what's it called? Gold or something. Anyway, um, but it's kind of dull. Continue 10 miles on I-264 East. put a finish on, the, on this paint, it, it makes it even more dull, so I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I may go over it with another gold that's a little bit shinier. Um, and then I'm going to use stickles in my flowers to kind of make them pop a little bit. I was trying to figure out what I was going to do with the ends, but I think I'm just going to leave them black. Um, if they were going to be open, I would probably do polka dots or something. But um, I'm just going to leave the ends like they are and then use stickles to really bling out the flowers. And I've got a piece of bling on top, so I may not put any I'm going to be wearing a lot of um, big jewelry with my costume. So. so I did that, and then I told you guys I was going to start working on my glue caddy. Um, I made one before and sent it to Debbie Rigg in Studio MDAZ. So um, I have, we have shipped out a lot that people ordered. Some people were sending me pictures, and it's so cool. I love to see what everybody's doing. But it dawned on me the other day that I hadn't even done one for myself. So, here's what I want to show you that I've done since we've been in the car. This is the blue caddy. So far. on the 
sides is um, striped it. So, uh, or I'm going to make checks. Hey, Linda, I'm going to make checks. So, I'm going to do every other one. You see how I have them marked? So, I'm going to get mixed up. So, all the way around that bottom edge, I'm going to check every other one black, every other one white, and then on this back part where the cord wraps around, you can see that I have stripes that are about a quarter inch wide. So, I'm going to do that black and white stripe. Those are vertical stripes. And then underneath that and on top of that, I'm going to do horizontal black and white stripes. Then if I think it needs any polka dots or whatever, I'll add it. What I may do is I may paint these front two parts in the center before I put the tile in it. I may paint them black and then put small white polka dots on them. I'm not sure yet. I will put a, a finish on it. And um, since mine will be outside some when we're camping, I'll probably use an engine enamel on it to make it so that it won't get damaged outside. But all of this I've done in the car today. I'm gonna turn my camera around so you can see. I showed you the other day that Ronnie had made me a lap tray from a Home Depot box. So here's my lap tray that sits on my lap. I've got brushes, scissors, eraser, ruler, pencil, pen, Mod Podge, sponge. This has water in it for me to rinse my brushes in. Um, and I can just sit right here while we drive and craft till my heart's content. So, that's what crafting and cruising is about today. Um, so I thought we'd do something a little bit fun. Um, I'm going to ask Rodney a question he's not prepared for. Oh, good. And he gets to tell you um, how we met and how he proposed to me. So I'm going to turn different things. the camera to him. Okay. I'm not going to look into the camera because I'm no, driving through Cincinnati camera. right now. Let's see how we met. Uh, when I was about 24 years old, I had, uh, and some of you folks on here may be able to relate to this or remember some of this, but I was working at Jack Daniel Distillery. I had graduated from college. I had built a log cabin, was about finished. I had a car and a truck and a dog and everything a person needs except wasn't married. So I decided it was about time to be serious about finding somebody to marry. So I asked uh, my sister-in-law, Marie, if there's any good looking teachers started teaching that fall over at Lynchburg High School or grade school. And um, she said, yeah, there's a couple of new people in there and she'd check around. So she came back in a few days and said she'd met somebody named uh, Lisa Lanier, who uh, does a couple of other ladies, but Lisa was single. And uh, she thought it'd be a nice person for me to meet. But Lisa wasn't interested. She was dating somebody at the time. But Marie kept bugging her till one day she relented and decided that she would go on a blind date with me. So we went down to Marie's to have dinner, and which was near my log cabin it was built. And after we met that night, talked for a long time, uh, neither of us dated anybody else. And within a few months, uh, I decided to ask her to marry me. So during that three months, we've been doing all kinds of stuff. We were canoeing, I was cutting wood and loading, doing all kinds of things around the cabin and the farm. And she was helpful with all that. Mind you, I grew up in the city, not. Yeah, she was not much of a country girl, that's for sure. So I um, decided, I'd been doing a lot of cave exploring with my friends, so I took her to a cave I was familiar with, and she was not dressed for the occasion. She was wearing green, my green coveralls and a hard hat and uh, slick tennis shoes that wouldn't grip in the mud at all. And so we went in the cave, and it was one called Chicken Coop Cave between Lynchburg and Sheffield. Oh, I'm just now learning the name of it. After 42 years, I've never heard that. Uh, because there was a chicken coop inside. We're back in the uh, 
probably during the 40s or so, they used to have chicken fights in there, and uh, it's also, I think, used during Prohibition some. But uh, there was no lighting or anything in the cave. But I took her back in there, showed her a little bit of the cave, some of the side rooms. In fact, the book that I wrote a couple of years ago, one of the rooms in the book that I wrote is modeled after the room in that cave, the round room. And uh, anyway, uh, after we'd been in there for a while, I told her I had something I wanted to ask her, and she said, I'm ready to go, ready to get out of here. And uh, so I said, well, if I want to ask you something serious, I said, we're in here all by ourselves, and we just got a question for you, and asked her if she would marry me. And there was something making a little squeaking noise behind, and we looked around, I shined the light, and there was a brown bat or two hanging, just one or two hanging on the ceiling there behind her. And um, she, for some reason, didn't like that. But she was really ready to go then once she found out there were bats. And uh, anyway, let me turn over here. Uh, so my response was Her what? response was, uh, I don't remember. I, I just remember her saying yes. But she uh, said it was uh -huh. contingent on me getting her out of that cave. And that's exactly right. So anyway, we soon got out of the cave. And... Uh, we took a few pictures. I think I've still got a picture of her in her attire with her green coveralls and mud up from head to toe. But anyway, she said yes. And within, you know, I don't know, several months later, we got married in the following June 21st, 1980. So we've been married a long time. So apparently a cave is a good place to propose to somebody. Apparently it is not. Okay, I'll tell you a a brief version of the real story, okay? Because he tricked me into going into that cave, which I had told him I had no desire to go spelunking. But he tricked me into it. So I went. However, I asked him, was anybody else going to be in the cave with us? And he said no. Okay? Now, he told you I had one of his hard hats on. You know, the one kind of supposed to have a little light on top to shine around in the cave. Yeah, well, that wasn't working on mine. So I had to hold on to him. I was literally trying not to do the splits as I was walking through there because it was so slick. Petrified. He was loving every minute of it. We get back to this one humongous boulder rock where people had written their names and In three stuff. quarters of a mile, take exit down. 23A on the right. And I heard a fluttering like, and I said, what was that noise? And he said, I oh, nothing. And I said, what was that noise? You told me nobody would be in here but us. Hey, Tip, yeah, great memories, whatever. Easy for you to say. Um, and so he said, it's just a couple of bats. I was petrified. So he, I said, we're going right now. Get me out of this cave. I'm never coming in a cave with you again. And he said, well, wait, wait, wait. I just need to ask you one thing. I said, you better hurry up because I'm, I'm out of here. And he goes, will you marry me? And I said, if you'll get me out of this damn cave, I'll do anything. That's exactly what I said. And then we walked out of the cave and I was like, oh my gosh, what in the world did I just do? I just told this man I'd marry him. Now, I started teaching school there in September. I had, I had my engagement ring before Christmas. So that just tells you we didn't date very long. Then we got married the following June. So um, yeah, I haven't been back in the cave with him. Now, on our, what anniversary? About 40th. About 40th or something. He told me to pack a bag. We were just going somewhere fun. He wouldn't tell me where. Just pack some warm clothes. You can layer, blah, blah, blah. And I said, if you think I'm going in that cave, you're crazy. And he goes, no, you don't have to go in the cave. So, we went back to Tullahoma where we had our first date. And um, we went to the cave but stood outside took pictures with the gear. Um, that's all I would do. Never again. Nope. No, thank you. So, um, that's how we met, and that was 42 years ago. Debbie's on here. She was in our wedding. Um, and, yeah. So,
so I still haven't become much of a farm girl, but I did learn a few things. Um, and so, uh, Rodney, what was the thing that attracted me to you first? Hold on, let me turn the camera on this face. It was your personality. No, I said attracted me to you. Oh, uh, it was <laughs> the jeans I was wearing, I think. Uh, no, it was, tell the truth. <laughs> <laughs> tell the truth. I, I think it was how the jeans fit, it's maybe. Uh, uh -huh. Take exit 23A on the right. His sister-in-law taught school with me, and she kept saying, Hey, Debbie Stewart, she kept saying, I want you to meet my brother-in-law. I was like, no, I'm dating this guy. I plan to marry him. I don't want to meet your brother-in-law. She brought me all kinds of pictures from when he was at MTSU in college. He was a competitive gymnast in college. She brought me all these pictures of him doing crazy stunts. Yes, he had a good body. Yes, he was nice looking, but I was dating this guy. I didn't care to meet him. She kept on and kept on and kept on. And I said one weekend, because I drove with my friend an hour and 45 minutes each way to teach school right out of college. You heard that right, an hour and 45 minutes there. Taught school for eight hours, hour and 45 minutes back. So finally, Debbie says, you can take the boy out of the country, but not the country out of the boy. Best decision you ever made, she said. Um, and so um, finally I said, okay, this Friday night, I'm gonna spend the night with your brother and sister-in-law. And uh, I mean, I, I told you, her, I got it backwards. I told her, I'm gonna spend the night with you and your husband, who's Rodney's brother. I will meet your brother-in-law and then I don't wanna hear anything else about him. And she said, fine. So after school, I went to her house and um, she was preparing dinner, and Rodney Take came walking in. Take exit 23A on the right onto I-71 North towards Cincinnati. Or I don't remember which, but it was right across, it was behind the door, right across the table from where I was sitting in the kitchen. And so Rodney walked in, and you know, they said, Lisa, this is Rodney, Rodney, this is Lisa, blah, blah, blah. And um, he turned, and his brother said, I need you to help me with this washing machine. And he turned around, to go help his brother and I was like whoa he has a cute butt in those tight jeans it's a true statement and um he's right I never dated that other guy again or anybody else it's just him from then on so married 42 years we have three children we have four granddaughters lots and lots of estrogen um, around our place, and um, yeah. he works for Continue 71 miles on I-71 Water North. products. They make water heaters, and he's a field service engineer, so he goes out and troubleshoots um, water heater problems in businesses, nursing homes, schools, apartment buildings. Sometimes he calls me and says he's going to prison, meaning he has to go to a prison and check out a water heater. So, um, that's about all of that. Is there anything else interesting? Well, that pretty well covers our whole life right there. I thought you were doing <laughs> crafting. Not, uh... Well, I showed them my crafts, but um, Debbie said, y'all should get pictures together at the log cabin. Guess what, Deb? The person that was living in the log cabin burned it down. About a year or two ago. A couple, three years ago, yep. Probably on purpose. But we have some pictures of the cabin. For those of y'all who don't know what Debbie's talking about, when I met Rodney, he was building a log cabin. And he had gone and torn down a real old school build, schoolhouse in the area, a log schoolhouse. He re-notched all the logs, carried them to this piece of property he had, and he built that house from the ground up log cabin. He, he did all of the electrical. He did all the plumbing. He did the two-story um, stone fireplace. All of it. So when we met, he was working at Jack Daniels Distillery. He worked during the day. He would usually go down to his mom and dad's, grab something to eat, and then go work at the um, cabin, which didn't have electricity when I met him. So what were you using? To, like for lights. 
It had electricity when I met you? Yeah. I thought it did. I it just left much. the lights turned off. <laughs> oh, well, I see. You turned, left the lights turned off. So, um, then every time I would, you know, stay in Lynchburg, we would sit out on the porch. It was black as could be. Because it was kind of back up in a wooded area. No street lights or anything. And we would sit on that porch all night long, rocking in rocking chairs, just talking and cheering. And, um, yeah. So, he, he did. It was a small cabin, but he did a great job. Um, and then we had some people that rented it when we moved back um, closer to my family that didn't take care of it. And then we finally sold it. And um, the guy that bought it from us is not the guy that was living there, right? When it burned. Right. It was somebody that was living there for free or whatever. Yeah, but I it think was, so. yeah. We, they suspect it was arson, but it was. Yeah. It lasted 40 years. So. Anyway, I went to high school two years at Hillwood High School for anybody who's around here. Then I went to Brentwood Academy, which was a new school, graduated in the first graduating class. Went to Belmont University, which was Belmont College at that time, and got my undergraduate degree in um, elementary education and special ed. And then um, after Ronnie and I married and had our first two children, I went back to Belmont, which was then Belmont University, and got my master's degree in early childhood education. Um, I taught uh, special ed grades four through six in Lynchburg at the elementary school. And then I taught preschool three-year-olds for many years. After that, I was the um, program director and preschool three-year-old teacher, and um, eventually burned out and, and stopped. So, um, that's other than some other little jobs here and there, that's, that's a basically me. So anyway, um, thanks for being on here. Don't forget to sprinkle this out. Mr. FB does not like the word S-H-A-R-E, so we can't say that word. Um, but you can plant some seeds, sow some seeds, sprinkle the love, spread the love, whatever you want to call it. Um, and uh, I will probably finish this blue caddy uh, this weekend while I'm gone. And if so, I'll either post pictures or get on live and show you guys. Um, and then pretty soon I'm going to start doing a real fun thing for Christmas. Um, came up with this idea all on my own and can't wait to start on it. So have a great week and